On October 19, 2020, the Australian Government passed the Job Ready Graduates Package in Parliament. According to the Government website, the Bill will create up to 30,000 new university places and 50,000 new short course places in 2021. On a surface level, the Bill seems like a valuable proposition. Creating more jobs and university spaces in a time when the world is in financial turmoil is not something many would oppose. However, these statistics do not provide a complete overview. In making these changes, the Liberal National Party, or LNP, has increased the cost of degrees that are considered a non-priority in an attempt to funnel students into the degrees they do view as a priority. Degrees in nursing, mathematics, science, engineering and teaching are considered priority degrees, with more places available and the overall cost of the degree dropping. Meanwhile, to compensate for the loss of revenue in these degrees, the government will punish students who pursue a career in humanities and increase their fees by up to 113%. By doing so, the LNP perpetuates their belief that universities are simply a system designed to set students up for corporate jobs. It is a belief that runs parallel with a capitalistic society and free market economy. When growing the economy and increasing revenue is the main priority, as it is with the LNP, other facets of life that sit outside this bubble are set aside. Any form of self-discovery and pursuing a career of passion is discouraged if it does not fit the area of priority degree. And while there is no problem with a student wanting to become an engineer, there is an issue with the government making students, most of whom are freshly out of high school, choose a degree they have no interest in for the sole purpose of improving the bottom line. Dead Poet Society, which was released in 1989 and directed by Peter Weir, is a film that addresses this very idea and the toxic environment of dictating a child's destiny. A toxic environment that is manifested in the very nature of capitalism. We follow a group of boys as they navigate their way through the elite private school, Walton Academy. They are taught by a new English teacher, Mr Keating, who is an old student at the school and purveyor of new modern teaching techniques. Teaching techniques that contrast heavily with the stale and rudimentary teaching of the older, more conservative faculty. The boys are regularly challenged by Mr Keating to pursue their passions and discover their sense of self, even if it may be irregular for a Walton Academy student. In essence, he places self-fulfillment above reputation and encourages them not to settle for what is expected of them. In doing so, Mr Keating is classified as a radical outcast in the school faculty. He is blamed for a tragic incident by the very people that should be held responsible and terminated from his position at the school. Parallels can be drawn from the film's narrative and the current educational system in Australia. As a student currently studying an arts degree, I am lucky to not fall victim to the increased prices. However, throughout my experiences in the schooling system, I felt the pressures to do well in class, get a good respectable job and work until I retire in order to make someone else rich. These pressures, while sometimes direct, often occurred indirectly without my knowing. The film is still as relevant today as it was when it was released 30 years ago. The beginning of Dead Poets Society provides us with an understanding of how Walton Academy operates. It is a strict disciplinary boarding school shaped by its history and tradition. The headmaster in the opening scene explains to his students and faculty that 75% of the previous year's graduates went on to an Ivy League college. While it is not said explicitly, it is implied that those who went to an Ivy League school represented Walton Academy with distinction and honour. Those that did not are not even worthy of being a statistic. The film further substantiates this idea when the headmaster tells Todd Anderson, who is one of the boys in the main group, that he has got some big shoes to fill. This pressure placed on the students by the faculty is motivated by selfish means as the boys' academic achievements also reflect on the school's reputation. The better the reputation, the better the bottom line. The introduction of Mr Keating comes soon after a compilation of mundane classes the students have attended prior. They are planted to their desks and made to complete the set curriculum. In contrast, Keating's first lesson as teacher introduces the boys to his uncommon teaching techniques by stepping out of the classroom. This scene is pivotal, not only as an important scene in the film, but in regard to the education as a whole. Keating challenges his students to think about their life and the legacy they may leave. Carpe diem is repeated throughout the scene, which many would know to mean seize the day. 
it becomes clear that it is likely the first time the boys have been told to think for themselves. Keating, being an ex-student of Walton Academy, was likely disenfranchised by the way his education had moulded him and seeks to forge a new path for these students. Rather than setting for a career they are told to follow, Keating wants them to find what makes them happy and make use of the finite amount of time we have in life. Connecting this idea back to the current climate of our education system, the limited scope of the older generations and their rather out-of-date thinking that life is simply a cycle of education, a good job, and then retirement is a dangerous philosophy. Keating recognises that while it is perfectly acceptable to seek a good education and land a respectable job, it should not be encouraged in place of self-fulfilment and self-development. Mr McAllister is a relatively small character that shows an extremely important character development. The first interaction between Keating and Mr McAllister illustrates the juxtaposition of Keating and his peers. McAllister refers to Keating's peculiar techniques as misguided and that he's taking a big risk by encouraging them to become artists. This particular stigma surrounding arts and any industry that does not have a linear approach of degree to job is largely dismissed as the delusions of someone not yet adept to the adult world. Pursuing a career that does not provide a steady paycheck and chance for upward promotion is simply an immature thing to do. By the end of the film, Mr McAllister has made a subtle change in character that suggests he has adapted the forward thinking and immersive learning techniques of Keating. In their parting moment, Mr Keating waves to Mr McAllister in the courtyard as he walks with his students. It suggests that Mr McAllister has parted with his mundane, conservative teaching methods in place of a more progressive teaching style. He is a member of the establishment that shows a distinct change. Finally, the character of Neil Perry is a tale of passion and devastation. Perry is the most impacted by the optimistic and encouraging nature of Mr Keating. Neil is restricted in his ambition by his overbearing father and made to pursue a career as a doctor. His father is a tough disciplinarian and cares very much for the success of his child, although it is evident his concerns come from self-interest over fatherly love. Mr Perry wants nothing more than for his son to succeed, so he can serve the family name positively and maintain its reputation. At the beginning of the film, Neil seems to be a slave to his father's commands. He is reprimanded in front of other students by his father for pursuing a role in the school newspaper and is quick to concede this ambition. Inspired by the teachings of Mr Keating, Neil ignites his passion for acting and finally follows his dream. Unknown to his father, he auditions for the school play and receives the main role. Mr Keating encourages Neil to be honest to his father and tell him exactly how he feels about acting and the passion he has towards it. Unfortunately, his father does not accept this deviation from his studies and once again disciplines him. The climax of the film comes as Neil ends his life as he sees no viable reason to continue. His passion was quashed and therefore his reason to live. While it is an extreme take on this theme, the underlying message is extremely important. Discouraging people, particularly the youth, from achieving both self-identification and self-achievement is extremely damaging. Modern education does precisely this and the LMP have only compounded this idea with their new bill. Funneling students into four or five careers is not the way to nurture and develop the independent and unique skills each individual has. Whilst the economy is important and should be looked after, it should not come at the cost of others. In fact, the changes come at both financial and personal burden. They can either choose to succumb to the status quo and enter a career the government wants them to, or pursue their own passions and be met with a financial cost. Dead Poet Society continues to have relevancy to it and has only become more relevant in the last few months. Encouraging free and critical thinking is such a vital part of education. However, the restraints placed on students and the educational system that is completely shaped by the capitalistic need to generate large profits avoids these values. It simply must change.